From the death of a journalist in Turkey to the midterm elections, there is plenty going on in the world of politics. Yes, and Loyola Marymount Professor Fernando Guerra joins us now to help us break it all yeah. down. And we do want to start, Professor, with mm -hmm. the death of Jamal Khashoggi. Saudi Arabia now admits that he died in yeah. the Turkish consulate. And how does this change how people are looking at this and how the president is handling the situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, number one, it clarifies that he is, in fact, dead. Mm -hmm. Number two, that he actually died in the consulate at the hands of Saudis, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And But, you know, the question is, where's the body? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the important issues. And what's the investigation? Um, so it, the, the difficulty here is not so much mm -hmm. the death, which is uh, tragic, but the U.S. response, in particular, President Trump's response. In the past, administrations would at least pretend to be outraged and demand certain uh, activities. Here, you're not seeing that. That. And it's because the president's protecting his friends. And it's not U.S. friends in particular, but his friends. Remember, he visited Saudi Arabia. That was his first trip. And he's had business, uh, business dealings with him before. Um, the long-term consequences for this is years after, even decades after Donald Trump is no longer president, critics of America will use this to say you don't have moral authority. That president actually reflected your true values. No matter what you're saying right now, we don't believe you because, as a matter of fact, most of Trump's supporters say he speaks the truth. Well, here's the truth. This is how America views its role, and it's no longer really the leader of the free world. Professor, let's move to the midterm elections because yeah. we're just a little more than two weeks away now. It looks as if Democrats will uh, retake control yeah. of the House, but the Republicans could keep control of the Senate. What are the chances that things could change in the next two yeah. weeks? Well, if the election were today. Right. Democrats would definitely capture the House. Okay. And I think for, for a first time in a long time, California would play a significant role in that. Remember, in California, we have 53 congressional seats. Mm -hmm. That's over 12 percent of all the seats. And remember also that uh, Democrats need to capture 23. Of the 53 in California, 39 are held by Democrats. They're all safe. They're not competitive. Mm -hmm. no, you know, not, we're not even covering them, right? Mm -hmm. of, the 14, of the 53, 14 are Republican. Half of those are competitive. Mm. And so it could be that California provides over 25 percent of the seats that the Democrats need to win the House. Wow. That's not only significant, I mean, that's really significant for California to be in the middle of all of this, mm -hmm. right? Uh, second, the U.S. Senate, you know, I have three scenarios. One, it basically stays the same, 51-49. Two, the uh, Democrats capture it. That, that would need, a lot of things would need to happen. Number one, all the Democrats that are running as incumbents would need to win, and then Democrats would need to capture Nevada, Arizona, mm. for sure, and maybe even Texas. Really tough for Democrats to do. There's also a, a third scenario where Republicans actually increase their uh, hold, hold. On, on the Senate. So those three scenarios, <clears throat> the third scenario would be historic. And this would be the first time in the history of American politics that a in the midterm, the Democrats or the opposing party of the president captures a House but loses seats in the Senate. That mm -hmm. has never happened. Mm -hmm. It could happen. That would be an incredible talking point for the Republicans and Donald Trump. Interesting. Let's look at the gubernatorial race yeah. between uh, Gavin Newsom and John Cox. How are things looking and standing right now? Um, right now, I'm projecting a historic victory margin for Newsom. That mm -hmm. he will win over 60% of the vote, maybe wow. even 67% of the vote. It just reflects the role of the uh, Republican Party here. I um, mean, you think about John Cox and, and the previous uh, Republican nominee for governor, Kashari. These are individuals that didn't even live in the state three or four years before they ran, mm -hmm. never held public office. Basically, Republicans can't even find a viable candidate to run for governor, mm -hmm. let alone be competitive. This is truly a blue state. Um, uh, Gavin Newsom will be, win by more votes than any governor in a hundred years. Wow. Right. Professor Fernando Guerra, thank yeah. you so much for your insight. Yeah. The Thanks next for two having weeks me. will sure be interesting. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks sure. a lot for your insight. And remember, we have a complete voter guide on our website to help you navigate the midterm elections. You can find it on kcal9.com.